Welcome back, webheads, to the mediocre Spider-Man. The, the, the show. It's the show's name. It's me. I'm Spider-Man. I'm mediocre, not the games. Well, some of them are. Speaking of games, back in the golden age of three years ago, I spun up our very first episode, where I took a look at Web of Shadows, The Amazing Allies Edition. Ah, those few short years where Activision marketing ghouls were obsessed with pointless, bizarre branding for their superhero titles. Coming out of my cage. Anyway, I felt it was appropriate to give Web of Shadows, the uh, main No Allies edition, a full in-depth review, as I have had a turbulent relationship with this very interesting, uniquely dark turn in Spidey's video game career. For everything it does well, it does something considerably less well. For every thrilling visceral special attack, there's a mundane clunky plot device. And for every perfectly casted voice role, there is an imperfectly casted voice role. You're gonna be fine. I love my present. I love my present. There is so much to talk about here, so grab your spider mask and load up on your cartridges. It's time for us to crawl across this web of shadows. In the late 2000s, Peter Parker was a busy, busy boy. His third cinematic adventure was heading theaters with a room-clearing spider fart. See ya, chump. There was then the video game adaptation of said movie, Play the Clip. I'm going to die! Thank you. And don't forget the release of Spider-Man Friend or Foe, because most people do. Treyarch, the game developers of the Raimi trilogy as well as Ultimate, were working feverishly to get Spider-Man 3 done for 2007. But then the following year, they had to deliver a new Call of Duty game, I don't care which one it was. And finally, in that same year, they needed to make 007 Quantum of Solace, so their hands were full at the behest of their Activision masters. Now, it might seem a bit much to have released two distinct Spidey titles in one year, then follow that that up with another less than 12 months later, but that was Activision's MO. This was when annual entries had just crossed over into the gross slash slimy zone. You needed a new Spider-Man game every year, a new Guitar Hero every year, and of course a new Call of Duty every fucking year. However, since Treyarch was too busy to take on a third title, 2008 Spider-Man entry would need to be headed up by someone else, that someone else being Shabba Games. They were a San Francisco-based studio that had splintered off from Crystal Dynamics and had cut their teeth almost exclusively on extreme sports titles. They were tasked with... Wait, what? No, they... No, there's, there's no way. They, they made... <laughs> Wow, just, I... Anyway, Shabba was the main studio responsible for Web of Shadows development, but Treyarch were also co-credited on it as well. This is because the game uses the same, not great engine that powered Spider-Man 3, so Treyarch were there to simply give technical support. You can definitely feel this when you play, as Shadows diverges starkly from everything that had come before it. It emphasizes certain core gameplay ideas while de-emphasizing others, so it's really clear that Shabba wanted to make something different while still sticking close to what fans had come to expect, which frankly is always a tricky business. Therefore, Web of Shadows is a self-contained adventure, having no connection to the Raimi games or even Ultimate Spider-Man, which is a shame since they are both Venom-centric tales. Peter gets tangled up in a symbiote race war that starts off pretty slowly before it completely engulfs the entirety of NYC, affecting both regular people and super people alike. Now, whenever Venom is in the mix, that usually means the black suit isn't far behind, and that's the main gameplay feature of Web of Shadows, to transform between the black and the red suits, which gives Spidey wildly different abilities. Now, I, I gotta take a second here. This doesn't make sense. Like, at all. If Peter has the black suit on, then he has it on. Just turning it red shouldn't take away from his symbiotic powers or make him more or less of a dick. I know it's a gameplay contrivance, but damn, this plays very loose with established lore. 
as you fight through waves and ways of gang members, techno SWAT dudes, crazed civilians, and symbiotes, you'll eventually need to buddy up with certain characters and make decisions to get to the bottom of all of this. The bottom being stopping Venom. While I usually take some time here to discuss the game's overall story threads, I already just did that. Web of Shadows is laser focused on a Spider-Man vs Venom story with no room for anything else, while simultaneously spending very little time actually being about that. It's not so much a story, but a scenario. Peter needs to beat Eddie and has to choose how best to do it, sticking with the tried and true red and blue, or walking the dark path of the NWO. The great thing about Web of Shadows is that its best qualities are constantly thrown at you, because when you get down to it, you never stop fighting. Ever. Let's break it down. You can switch between the red and black suits with the click of a stick, and while they have similarities, they have just as many differences. Spider-Man can reel his enemies in with his black suit tendrils or lift and chuck cars, which is a nice change of pace because you actually feel powerful. You unlock different combos, attacks, and abilities independently for each suit, giving you two distinct ways to take out half the population of New York. On top of that, you can mix and match each suit's powers and combos at any time, even in the middle of an attack string, which gives the game the most character action feel of any Spider-Man game before or after. If the combat nuances ended right there, that'd be good enough, but once you add in a layer of web strikes onto your combat pizza, ooh, mamma mia, that's a spicy pie. The web strike anchors you to your closest enemy, whether they're on the ground or in the sky. Once you've initiated the strike, the camera pulls back, and as you rocket towards the enemy, it gives you a bunch of option selects as what to do next. You can continue to barrel ahead and cause damage, cancel it at the last second and dodge, jump over your enemy if it looks like they're going to counter, or chain that into throws and other moves. You can web strike from enemy to enemy, never touching the ground. You can launch them into the air with a pop-up attack, combo them, switch to the black suit, then finish them off with a web strike that knocks them all the way back to Jersey. Fuck your life! The possibilities are truly endless, and it looks sick as shit. Fighting isn't just restricted to the ground either, because regardless of the suit he's wearing, Peter can now fight on the sides of buildings. This isn't really used to its full potential, but it's still really cool. When sticking to a wall, certain enemies can engage you, and you have a decent little moveset in which to deal with them. The amazing thing here is that this doesn't feel disorientating or awkward, and I suspect Shabba's experience with extreme sports titles played a big part in that. All of this mobility feeds into the basic web swinging pretty well, and while it doesn't do anything new or exciting, it's still really solid. It's not any worse or better than the games that came before it, but in a big change that I do like that is vaguely related to the web swinging is the uh, spider symbols. Now, we all know it's required by law that all Spider-Man games need something to collect, and in an effort to promote web swinging and exploring the pea-soaked alleys of NYC, these symbols were dumped all over town. Now, they don't unlock suits or comics or tips, but rather a very tangible, worthwhile reward. Collecting them in set tiers upgrades both your health and web swinging speed, and with every level, the amount you need to collect then increases. Think of the agility orbs in Crackdown, just with more Spider-Man. Another positive aspect to this is that any time during your quest to punch Venom's many sticky teeth out, you can grind out these symbols, even if you're in the middle of a mission. Oh, you're being attacked by a symbiote! Just, just, I'll be there in one second! Just, oh god, this is so embarrassing. Uh, Oh, yeah. ah, there we go. It's a really neat way to split up upgrades so they're not all lumped together. It encourages exploration, and I much prefer it over the store in Spider-Man 2 or the preset intervals in Spidey 3. Now, earlier, I mentioned that Peter can make certain choices and alliances, which, on a base level, is a really neat idea that pushes a morality system in the right direction. See, Spidey 3 didn't really have any actual consequences to using the symbiote, as it was all dictated by the story, and Amazing Spider-Man 2's hero or menace system is the Amazing Spider-Man 2's hero or menace. Now, it's not all perfect at all, something I'll get to, but the concept is really sound, having a good and evil mechanic that works within the story confines of the black suit. 
There's not many ways in which you can get fans to buy a what if Peter Parker was an alpha dick jerk style scenario, but this is certainly one of them. No other game has come close to pushing this aspect of Spidey's psyche, and while there's flaws in its approach, Web of Shadows is the best attempt so far. Also, I have to call out the fact that this game beat the Venomverse to the punch by several years, so you get to see Venomfied designs for Wolverine, Black Cat, Vulture, and others, and it's just cool to see them. What these good and evil choices do is give you alternate dialogue, change the loadout of strikers that come to help you out during a fight, swap out MJ for Felicia, a big upgrade, and reward you with a different ending. One is kinda meh, and one is violent and depressing, so there's that? While neither is super satisfying, I do believe this is the only Spidey game that even has multiple endings, outside maybe Sinister 6 for the PC, but I don't even care to look that up. Now, when I play Web of Shadows, I always go for the pure Peter run. That's just me. Yeah, it's kind of fun for Felicia and Peter to be going, <laughs> let's bone. But this was made in 2008, so it was a smart move on Shabba's part to allow burgeoning edgelords the option to be violent assholes. Only way they could have made it better is if they had gotten Toby's face and likeness so we could have lived out our bully Maguire fantasies. Look at little Goblin Jr. Gonna cry. The last thing I have to give shoutouts to is the game's copious amount of QTEs, a holdover from Spider-Man 3 most likely included because it was the style at the time. Now, I enjoy these ironically, let that be clear, as they didn't intend for every fail to be so goddamn funny. Are you okay? Spider-Man 3 may have the most famous one, but Web of Shadows overtakes it with its sheer volume of relentless hilarity. What's better is that these QTEs are designed in such a way you can fail any of them with no fear of repeating a level, as they always start over from the beginning of the button tapping, so you can truly just <sighs> soak it all in. Eddie, I want to talk to you, the real Venom! <laughs> that, amazing! And with that, I conclude the positive segment of this review. One of my superpowers is to not mince words, sometimes, and I will enact this power with the following statement. The story of Web of Shadows is trash, and not just one single part of it, but rather everything that goes into making an enthralling, interesting narrative. From the dialogue, to the cutscene direction, to the general story threads, all of it works together to give you one of the most banal, confusing, unsatisfying plots in a superhero game. Yes, I want a Spider-Man vs. Venom story, but not this one. Not with the way it was told. It starts with an in-media res sequence, which is fine. There's symbiotes everywhere, lots of explosions, you have a bunch of moves unlocked, there's Moonlight Sonata... But typically, after that, the story should then resume from its logical starting point, you know, the beginning. But Web of Shadows doesn't really do that, because even when time is rewound, you still feel like you were thrust into a story that was already in progress. Venom is just loose in town, he didn't escape from somewhere, you, you don't get his origin story, he's just here. That goes double for the rest of the rogues gallery, as they are also running around roughshod over NYC with no real story setup. Remember, this was intended to be a brand new standalone title with no connections to the previous game, so you'd think they would have done some world building instead of, you know, zero. How long has Peter been Spider-Man? What villains are currently in power? Does he work for the Daily Bugle? Where's Aunt May? Where are the wheat cakes? We are told he's in a relationship with Mary Jane, and not a very good one, but really, that's all we're ever told. Spidey's double life is never referenced. He never takes off his mask, never goes to work. Peter Parker barely even exists. In fact, I think the only time his name is ever even uttered is when MJ loudly says it in front of a bunch of EMTs. Peter? I would really prefer if you would be quiet. 
The same goes for Eddie Brock. You never really see him. He's just Venom the entire time. How sick would it have been if this game had really explored their relationship? They clash as Eddie and Peter, then fight in their respective suits, and all the mind games start going off. Venom threatens Aunt May to gain an advantage, use her as bait. There's a million things you could have done. But no, the game decides its opening hours should be spent doing odd jobs and tutorials for a conveyor belt of other heroes. In Shadows, Spidey is an errand boy and not much else. Hell, he even gets taught on how to use his own powers. From the web strike to the combat to even his spider sense, Peter doesn't know how to use these things, but Cage, the Cat, and the Canuck do. Every so often, interspersed between these tutorials, a random villain will appear with very little rhyme or reason. They just show up, you beat them, and then you move on. This is very different from Spider-Man 2 or 3, where Mysterio and the Lizard get tons of backstory and set pieces all their own, despite not being the main antags. I require large amounts of your currency. Sure, Space Dude, whatever you say, just don't disintegrate me or whatever. Uh, the main story boils down to when symbiotes attack! Venom shows up at the start, he has a quick clash with Spidey, they fuse for a second, and that then lets Venom lay pulsating, symbiote-generating sacks somehow. I don't really get it, and neither did Shabba Games. They probably thought, we need a reason to fight a fuck ton of symbiotes right now, and started drawing the shortest possible line to get to that point. But what's weirder is that even though this entire story is supposed to center around the guy, Venom appears only three times in the entire game. You see, Web of Shadows is more concerned with having Spidey exchange charmless, never-ending dialogue with the rest of the Marvel Universe. You know, both of them just standing there, shot, reverse shot. This is what the game focuses on rather than presenting a twisting tale about two enemies battling for the heart of the city. And the game never really deviates from this structure. You meet Cage, you do 10 tutorial missions for him until he's swapped out with Black Cat. Hey. You then do shit for her, she gets replaced by Wolverine, who then gets swapped out for Moon Knight, then Natasha, etc. Oh, and we gotta talk about all these guest heroes, because honestly, there's way too many, making it feel like a sequel to Friend or Foe than anything else. Uh, hi everybody. As you progress and a new hero gets swapped in for the fourth time, it starts to feel less like a Spider-Man game and more of a Marvel Comics game. And listen, I love the occasional cameo, like your Black Cats, your Johnny Storms, or your Mr. Magoos. But Web of Shadows goes way overboard with it, honestly to the point where it starts to detract from the experience. Activision had the video game license for the general Marvel Universe at this time, so they had Shabba cram in as many characters as they could, even if some didn't make much sense. Calling them in to help out during fights is fine, but when the core combat is so sick, they really seem like a superfluous feature, especially since half the time they, well, So, yeah, safe to say I dislike the story. While the general scenario has potential, it's all the stuff in between that's severely lacking. Proper backstory and setup for just about every character and everything. Clever dialogue that feels authentic to the comics or the movies, and finally, normally paced cutscenes. The very few that Web of Shadows has feels like they were directed by an absolute madman. Let's go. MJ, MJ, I'm ah, so worried. Damn it. You best play it cool, man. Is it really you this time? Come on, we gotta go. Look, look, I promise, I promise I won't use it again. You promise? We are way past that. We ain't got time for this. What the hell is that? <sighs> Finally, we have the voice acting. Steve Blum as Wolverine, and even Travis Master Miller McTouchdown, Robin Atkin Downs as Moon Knight. There are some other performances, however, that I didn't really care for. Even Venom, you might ask? Especially Venom. But especially Spider-Man. He's the main hero, so you can imagine how big of a problem that really is. I can't put my finger on it, but the actor just sounds so miscast here, coming off as more annoying and panicky rather than confident and sarcastic. I figured that out about halfway through the huge battle at the courthouse. 
I'm smart that way. I would have killed to have gotten Josh Keaton in there, or, or Neil Patrick Harris, Reno Romano, just anyone else. So from the very start of the game, Spidey's quips fall flat, and don't get any more barbed later on during boss fights, which is a shame because they could absolutely use more entertainment value. You sound as irritating as Spider-Man, but you don't smell right. While there's the occasional unique idea thrown in there, like Wolverine asking you Marvel trivia, it's not long before Logan's head just simply busts an adamantium gasket, whereupon he just stands there and lets you wail on him. Most boss encounters are very punchy-kicky, with many of them lacking anything interesting about them. You can usually beat every villain with your basic moveset, in which case they swarm you with tons and tons of jobbers, which is more annoying than anything else. The combat and mobility was clearly balanced and designed around fighting waves and waves of enemies, so one-on-one -on -one fights really come off as an afterthought with no set pieces unique to them. I have one more issue that's big enough that I just gotta mention it. It's absolutely criminal that Shadows has no unlockable suits whatsoever. Where the hell did you get that? In the garbage. Now, I know what some of you might say. Oh, well, the game is about changing between two specific suits, so of course they couldn't have added any more. Are you high? Spidey has mad drip, maybe more than any other superhero in existence, with a spectrum of suits so varied that they had a million possibilities to choose from. You can separate each suit by its general color scheme, letting his darker duds fill out the role for the black suit while letting his brighter affair stand in for the red. But for whatever reason, uh, no, none of that. Now, remember 20 seconds ago when I said, no unlockable suits whatsoever? Well, I lied, but not really. The HD version of Web of Shadows lacks additional costumes, but the Wii version does not. You can select from Ben Riley, the Spider Armor, Miguel O'Hara, Cosmic Spidey, the Iron Spider, and even Spider Carnage. Now, that is a smaller amount compared to most other games, but at the very least, they picked some absolute bangers. My only guess here is that Shaba Games had a limited time frame to wrap things up, and Activision were not willing to allocate more. The Wii port was also developed by Shaba, but I'm sure it had its own dedicated team, and for whatever reason, they found the time to include them. But if you're like me in 2008, you opted for the PS3 or 360 versions, which is a bit of a bummer, because without the extra suits, doing a run where you make all dark choices is the only reason to replay it. There's zero unlockables, like not even a new game plus, which is a shame because starting over with all your shit unlocked would have been pretty awesome. I think there's some obscure trick where you can abuse a save bug, which sort of lets you do it, but it's not in there by default, so that really smacks of a game being rushed. So, those are my main gripes, but it's not even all of them. There's the lack of any true side missions or activities, the game is pretty buggy, and while I'm playing the PC version for this review and it performs pretty well, the old console versions did not. I can only really speak for the 360, but I remember that game chugging as you swung throughout the city, and the screen got torn up all this shit, especially when all the symbiotes started their 24-hour block party. However, I must digress, and we must move on, because we still gotta touch on those ports. The Wii version, aside from the suits, is an identical game. It lacks most of the graphical effects and detail, has lots of poppin' and texture loading issues, but it's still a pretty solid effort. It even uses the same cutscenes from its HD brother, they're just literal video files, rather than using the in-game graphics. I don't have a ton of experience with this one, as I've only played it once or twice, but if you have any more insight in the comments, do let me know. The Amazing Allies edition for the PS2 and PSP and developed by Amaze is a totally different beast, as some of you may know. It's a 2.5D side-scroller that couldn't be any different while still retaining some core aspects. It's still about Venom swapping suits and making choices, usually of the mean or not mean varieties. Amazing Allies has a lighter Saturday morning cartoon tone. It's far more jokey and has a different set of summons, including a few uh, you might not expect. The debt is paid. 
Even the storyline and main bosses differ quite a bit. There's Shocker, Craven, and even goddamn Jackal. This has to be the first and only time he's ever appeared in a video game, right? It's gotta be. I don't care what you say. In terms of negatives, well, its combat is a good deal more basic. There's no web strikes, for example, and its graphics are really nothing to look at. And with it being 2D, the web swinging lacks a certain tactile feel, but it's still an admirable effort. Finally, we have the DS version, and holy crap do I have some good memories about this one. It started Gryptonite's fantastic run of portable superhero brawlers, which all featured great micro-sized combat systems and some big, dense maps. You'll need to search for the action throughout warehouses, sewers, and city streets, all while collecting new abilities that'll let you progress even further. It also has its own exclusive set of characters and cameos, like Nightcrawler and even Willem Dafoe. It is an incredibly short adventure though, clocking in at around 3 hours average and isn't especially challenging. Out of the three different versions though, Web of Shadows DS is the highest rated among them. Wow, going back to this was a trip. I think overall, while I respect it a bit more now due to how well that combat system has aged, it mostly reminds me of how squandered this whole concept really was. From the story to the mission progression, the collectibles, the choices, there's some solid ideas here that beg to be expanded upon. As for what the game actually is, well, for me it's sadly more bad than good. And that's what makes this release so tragic, that there never was a sequel. God, I would have loved for them to have been able to polish this even further, add actual side activities, dynamic crimes, Peter segments, photography, and actual story. There was so much more room to grow. They had the engine, the NYC map, and a spectacular combat system already in place, but unfortunately, there was a huge monolith that casted a dark gloom across all this potential. The reviews for Web of Shadows were deeply average, and perhaps since it was coming off of Spider-Man 3, the game and the movie's divisive reception, this might have actually hurt Shabba's chances here. As far as I can find, it did not sell well across any territory or version. How do I know this? Well, it didn't even chart in the top 20 of the best-selling games of its release month. The bottom of that list was Guitar Hero World Tour I don't know, on the PS3, which moved 93,000 copies, so Web of Shadows, at the very best, sold below that during its launch month, which is, uh, pretty bad. Oh, if your spider sense is tingling, then you know what's coming next. Activision shut down Shabba Games one year later. This was their first Spider-Man title, but the last game they ever made. All right, let me just borrow something from a recent what happened, and here we go. Activision! Fuck them! I know lots of people feel this is one of the best or their personal favorite Spider-Man title, and that's cool. Personally, I feel it has way too many things holding it back, but what it is, is the Spider-Man game with the most untapped potential. All of its flaws are fortunately held back by the brilliant combat system, the web striking, and of course, the QTEs. Gotcha. Oh! So with that said, I'm going to give Spider-Man Web of Shadows 3 Pulsating Venom Egg Sacks out of 5. If you know of any other spider ventures you'd like me to swing gracefully into, let me know in the comments below, over on my Twitter, or wall crawl into the offices of the Flophouse VIP Patreon to order me to get pictures of what you want to see next. Excelsior, dear viewer, and I'll see you next time on the Mediocre Spider-Man.